Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Mohit Chaudhary, and I am accompanied with me, Dr. Ashna, who will be taking you through the primary hemostasis. This will be three series of uh, lectures, which will comprise of primary hemostasis, secondary hemostasis, and then we'll also be talking about thromboelastography, that is the viscoelastic uh, assays or the point of care testing in uh, hemostasis. So uh, first topic would be primary hemostasis, in which we will be talking about the endothelium and the platelets. We'll, the second will be secondary hemostasis, where we'll be discussing the coagulation cascade. And the third would be the things about thromboelastography or thromboelastrometry. So over to Dr. Ashna, who will be taking you through the primary hemostasis. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Ashna, and I will be talking about primary hemostasis now. Uh, so first we will discuss what is hemostasis. Hemostasis, it is a dynamic process whereby blood coagulation is initiated and it is terminated in a rapid and a tightly regulated fashion. So it imbalance may result in thrombosis and hemorrhage. Basically three components are involved in hemostasis that is endothelium, platelets and coagulation cascade. Now steps in hemostasis. First, there will be vasoconstriction, then primary hemostasis, that is the formation of plated plug, then secondary hemostasis, that is fibrin clot formation, and then finally tertiary hemostasis, that is fibrinolysis. So, first step of hemostasis is vasoconstriction. As we know, whenever there is an injury to the endothelial cells, the uh, endothelial injured endothelial cells will release endothelin, which will cause vasoconstriction. At the site of injury, neural endings will be damaged and it, uh, it will cause reflex vasoconstriction. This will help in minimizing the blood loss at the site of injury and this is transient. Now vasoconstriction has happened. Now primary hemostasis will take place. That is formation of uh, platelet plug uh, and a platelet play a major role in that. First, uh, there is injury, we know there is exposure of some endothelial collagen that is highly thrombogenic. So, it will attract platelet towards it. So, platelet has a receptor, CP1B receptor and it will bind to one milibrant factor on the collagen. So, uh, in the injured endothelial cells, it releases the one milibrant factor and then it attaches to CP1B receptor and platelet. This is platelet adhesion. Now, uh, platelet will undergo a shape change. There will be a conformational change in platelet. Normally, platelets, we know it is discoid in shape. Now, platelet will change its shape. There will be cytoplasmic projections in the platelet, which will we will study further, which will help in coagulation cascade. It provides a surface area for the coagulation cascade. Then, uh, platelet uh, undergoes shape change, it is activated, it will release its granules. Platelet has alpha and delta granules. Uh, now, now granule contents are released, main, main uh, the constituent of granule is ADP. ADP will get released, it will uh, attract other platelet, it will activate other platelet. Finally, recruitment and aggregation, uh, platelet aggregation will happen. Now we will discuss one by step. Each step we will discuss. Now platelet adhesion to vessel wall. It is mediated by two receptors on the platelet. That is glycoprotein 6 on platelets and GP1B59 receptor uh, complex which is present on the platelets. So glycoprotein 6, it, is, it directly binds to the collagen on the vessel wall. But GP1B receptor will bind to its ligand that is one milibrand factor. So first there is T3, then activation, then firm adhesion. T3 is when GP1B receptor binds to one milibrand factor. Uh, it is a rapid but a low affinity binding. Then uh, activation will take place. GP6 uh, will bind directly to the collagen. And then firm adhesion will take place by GP2B3B receptor. GP2B3B receptor, its main ligand is uh, fibrinogen, but it also binds to one milibrand factor and it causes firm adhesion. Now at lower shear uh, rates, like in veins and larger arteries, platelet adhesion primarily involves binding to collagen, fibronectin and laminate. 
but at higher shear rates uh, like in small arteries and like atherosclerotic arteries the interaction between glycoprotein 1b alpha and von willebrand factor it becomes important so interact interaction between the von willebrand factor and the gp1b it is a rapid but a low affinity event it slows the platelet but does not formally adhere platelet to the von willebrand factor so platelets are now tumbling over the subendothelium this is tethering so transmembrane signaling is produced by both higher shear rates and this interaction now it results in platelet shape change and a conformationally activated gp2b3 which will either bind to fibrinogen or larger von willebrand factor multimers and it it will cause firm adhesion so adhesion of gp2b3a to von willebrand factor is a higher affinity interaction than gp1b von willebrand factor bond at more moderate shear stress gp1b von willebrand adhesion it is supplemented by gp1a receptor and as we have discussed platelet gp6 receptor now uh, we know the platelet is normally discoid in shape and when it gets activated there is cytoplasmic uh, projections in the platelets see this uh, this is showing uh, electron microscopy of discoid dormant platelet platelets are normally discoid but when they get activated they have this cytoplasmic projections now platelet activation we have discussed platelet adhesion now the binding of platelets to this subendothelial collagen it triggers platelet activation uh, the platelet alpha and delta granules it releases its con uh, contents platelets undergo a conformational change and it exposes platelet phospholipid complex that is platelet factor 3 which is critical site for several steps in coagulation cascades now uh, a little bit about platelet granules platelet has alpha granules and delta granules alpha granules has p uh, selected fibrinogen fibrinogen is basically it is secreted from liver but small amount is also secreted from alpha granules factor 5 factor 8 platelet factor 4 pdgf and tgf beta delta granules we have to remember adp calcium and serotonin all these promote platelet aggregation fibrin generation vasoconstriction following vascular injury coagulation system is also activated we know injured endothelial cells any injured cell will release tissue factor tissue factor will activate factor 7 and by extensive pathway which we will discuss in secondary hemostasis uh, there is formation of thrombin so this thrombin through cleavage of protease activated receptor it will bind to gp1b receptor on the platelet and then thrombin will activate platelet now this is the ultra structure of platelet showing alpha granules and delta granules so uh, this, this is alpha granules and delta granules and delta granule has adp calcium and serotonin and alpha granule contain factor 5 von willebrand factor fibronectin beta thromboplastin now a platelet has got activated now platelet aggregation will take this aggregation means by to other platelets by fibrinogen which is mediated by fibrinogen receptor that is gp2b3 a receptor uh, this is the whole summary of primary hemostasis first we know that there will be injury subendothelial collagen will get exposed so the subendothelial collagen it is highly thrombogenic so it will attract platelet platelet has two receptors gp1b and gp6 so gp1b will bind to von willebrand factor and it will get attached to collagen and gp6 will directly bind to collagen so uh, this is platelet adhesion now platelet adhesion will produce uh, it will cause activation in platelet enzyme main enzyme enzyme is cyclooxygenase cyclooxygenase is key enzyme which will cause conversion of arachidonic acid to thromboxin a2 thromboxin a2 will bind to thromboxin a2 receptor in platelet which will cause platelet activation so platelet activation actually occurs in two cycles that is primary 
and secondary platelet activation. Primary platelet activation is mediated by so platelet activation occurs in two steps that is primary platelet activation and secondary platelet activation. Primary platelet activation occurs by shear stress. So whenever in an injured uh, area there will be a shear stress that will active or automatically activate the platelet then any injured cell will produce tissue factor and tissue factor by activating factor 7 by activating the extrinsic pathway it will produce thrombin and thrombin by a PAR receptor will activate the platelet. Now platelet has got activated it will cause there, there will be conformational change in the platelet shape it will be uh, it will show a cytoplasmic projection and there will be granule release that is alpha and delta granule will get released uh, delta granules as we have discussed it, uh, ADP will be released from it ADP uh, has receptors that is ADP receptors on platelet it will bind to it P2, Y12 and Y1 receptor and it will further activate other platelets and it will cause platelet aggregation which is mediated by GP2B3A receptor uh, mediated by fibrillogen receptor. Uh, so this is the whole summary of uh, primary hemostasis. We have to remember ad platelet adhesion, platelet activation and platelet aggregation. Now uh, a, a, flow, a flow chart diagram showing the primary hemostasis. First endothelial injury will occur. There will be exposure of thrombogenic surface that is subendothelial extracellular matrix. Reflex vasoconstriction will first occur to minimize the blood loss. Then platelet will get adhered and it will get activated. Adhesion is mediated by a bond bilirubin factor and GP1B interaction. And this interaction is supplemented by GP1A and platelet GP6 receptor. Platelet will undergo a conformational change. There will be shape change and the platelet get activated. It will release its secretory granules that is ADP and this will accelerate platelet activation and aggregation. Platelet aggregation is mediated by fibrinogen receptor that is GP2B3A and this will lead to formation of hemostatic plug or primary platelet plug. Okay, thank you.